Hello. Welcome to Crop Anatomy Lecture. This is the first lecture, the Lecture 1 series for Crop Anatomy. And um, we'll go right away into what we intend to achieve in this Crop Anatomy course. Uh, crop Anatomy is a course that is basically under agriculture, crop science is under agriculture. And so we are looking at the crop anatomy aspect, although the full lecture is crop anatomy and taxonomy. But in this first series, we'll be looking at crop anatomy. The course content are uh, this definition of terms, crop plant morphology, plant cell and detailed description of cellular contents, organelles, and their functions, types of crop plant cells, plant tissue and tissue systems, Comparative anatomy of plant organs. These are the, con the, the course content for this particular course. And at the end of the course, you're expected to know more about this. What is a crop? Sometimes people confuse crop and plant. And um, people really do not get to know that there is a crop and there is a plant. Generally, plant is a general term for every thing called plant. All right. So, crop is specific. What makes it specific is because it's a plant that is deliberately cultivated for food, for feed, fiber, and ornamental purposes. Crop anatomy is the study of crop plant organs, tissues, cells, via the technique of section cutting. Um, in other words, for you to say you are studying crop anatomy, you must be start doing it in a way that you're looking at things that are inside a plant after you've cut it. Okay? Things are inside a plant. And the term anatomy was derived from the word anatemen, anatemen, which means to cut asunder. Crop anatomy deals with the study of internal structures of the various organs of the plant, which also includes the structure of the cells and their components as well. Crop morphology is the study of the external structures of a crop plant. So I am bringing this in because I need to help um, some of you students to distinguish between crop anatomy and crop morphology. When you are studying at the crop plant, when you're looking at a, a plant and you're looking at it from the outside, oh, this plant has um, broader leaves, it has narrow leaves, this plant is a creeping plant, this plant is an erect plant, this plant is a trailing plant. Um, when you're looking at all those external features which a plant exhibits you are or you are now talking about crop morphology when your study is focused on that you are talking about crop morphology so uh, the difference between anatomy and crop morphology is that one has to do with external structures which is the morphology and the other has to do with internal structures which is the anatomy plant major body parts uh, there are two main types of plants, but let's just first of all look at the first one, angiosperm. A typical angiosperm plant is divided into two major parts. Some of you may be wondering what is an angiosperm, or you've heard of it before, but you really haven't gotten a good grasp of it. But hold on, when we get to when we get along, I will make a clear distinction between angiosperm and the other group category of plants. So back to what I was saying, a typical angiosperm plant is divided into two major parts the shoot system leaves flower stem and fruits these make up the shoot system all right why the root system is the primary root and the secondary root now if you look at it one category which is shoot system is above the ground there are those features of the plant that you can see easily okay why there are other features of the plant which you can't see easily, but you know they're there. Because without that feature, the, the plant won't be standing the way you're seeing it. So
So the root system are those that are below the ground. Okay, so you have the above ground parts of a plant, you have the below ground parts of a plant. The above ground parts of the plant is known as the shoot system, which comprises of the leaves, the flower, the stem, and the fruits. While the below ground parts consist of the primary root and the secondary root. The root, leaves, and stems from veget vegetative part of a crop plant form the rather, the root leaves and stem form the vegetative part of a crop plant okay while the flower and fruit form the reproductive part it's another way of categorizing a plant structure okay the the plant can also be categorized as vegetative parts and reproductive parts and the growth stages differ the initial stage of growth is the vegetative part which grows to a certain point in time and then the reproductive part commences. The vegetative part ceases to grow as the reproductive part commences until it completes its cycle and the plant, if, for an, if it's an annual plant, the plant senescence, that means it wilts and dies off or if it's a perennial crop then it ceases to produce fruit and then after a while it commences new production of new leaves which is the commencement of vegetative growth again and then it goes back to reproductive parts over and over take for example your mango which you have you know the mango after it has produced fruit at a, fruit at a particular time it will cease to produce fruit and then later on you see fresh leaves will begin to grow and coming out and share why the old leaves will share the way you know that is a, a cycle of vegetative and reproductive growth but for the maize which it's a, is a, an annual plant it grows produces the cob and then thereafter you harvest if you don't even if you don't even invest it it will die off to just be on the field and there it will die off you know so that's what you need to know about the various categorization of a crop part the vegetative body is composed of three organs, like I mentioned earlier, the leaf, the stem, and the root. This is just for emphasis. It's important that you take note of this. The primary function of a leaf is photosynthesis. <coughs> Excuse me. That of the stem is support, and that of the root is anchorage and absorption of water and minerals. Leaves are attached to the stem at nodes. And the region of the stem between two nodes is termed the internode. The point the leaf is attached is called a node. And the distance between the space between one of those nodes and the next leaf's node is called the internode. That space is called the internode. The stem together with its leaf is commonly referred to as the shoot. <coughs> Excuse me. It's commonly referred to as the shoot. There are two categories of seed plants. Like I mentioned earlier, we have the gynosperms, which is um, from the Greek word means naked seed, and angiosperms, based on the Greek word, means vessel seed or seeds contained in a vessel. Okay. So these are the two categories of plant species we have in the world. The gynosperms are the less advanced type. I said we have about 700 species unknown for those ones. They are largest group of the largest group of gynosperms is the conifers, which includes such commercial important forest trees as pine, fire, spruce, fir, spruce, and redwood. Angiosperms, the more advanced type of seed plant. They first became abundant during the Cretaceous period, about 100 million years ago. Today, they dominate the landscape, easily at computing the gynosperms. About 250 species, 250,000 species are known, that's for gynosperms, but many more remain to be characterized. The major innovation of the gynosperm is the flower ends. They are referred to as flowering plants. Okay, they are referred to as flowering plants. Gynosperms versus angiosperms. All right, okay, so this is what we call gynosperms. These are the plants. When you see, I know you've seen some of these kind of plants before around you. These are what the seeds look like. 
these are what the seeds look like these are the what the plant nature is they are conifers 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 i hope you understand all right why the angiosperms are known as flowering plants flowers plants that have flowers are called angiosperms plant body and its development the plant body consists of a number of organs we have the root the stem the leaf and flower the flower consists of sepals petals stamens carpels and sometimes sterile members each organ is made up of several tissues each tissue is made up of many cells of one kind okay a plant or a whole plant that is standing is made up of organs right and those organs are made up of tissues and those tissues are made up of cells that is how plant categorization body categorization is done when we call talk axis we're still talking about the different parts of the plant we're talking about the stem and the roots there is an axis the axis is the line of movement from up to down we have the stem axis we have the root axis on the stem axis we have appendages such as leaves emergence and hairs why on the roots we have emergence and hairs now this is a typical flowering plant an angiosperm so in our course in crop anatomy we are looking at angiosperms we are not looking at gynosperms okay so don't ask me questions as ah, so you've not showed the anatomy of gynosperms no we are looking at angiosperms only flowering plants and for this this typical example of a flowering plant you can see where the flower is those of you who do not know where what flower what part of the plant is a flower we have the fruit we have the stem we have the leaf as you can see here um, you have the node between this node and this other node is called the interlude from here to here is called the interlude the board which is more like the emergence is also here we have for the root region axis we have the primary root and the secondary root now to go a bit deeper inside to see other things that this other one I've not shown for this one we have the apical board um, I'll come more to this but th this point is the region of growth okay at this point things take place that makes the plant to grow I'll come out on that later on we have the leaf the leaf comprises uh, the leaf is basically I have a midrib vein okay a midrib region and a leaf lamina a midrib region and a leaf lamina the leaf lamina is that part that you basically see as the leaf well actually the leaf it comprises of the leaf lamina and the leaf uh, midrib we have the stem we have the auxiliary board the auxiliary board are the areas where branches grow from okay branches grow from such as this one now it grew from the auxiliary board okay all right on the leaves also we have veins like I earlier point out the leaf is being held by a pto by the structure called pto which is connected to the stem via the node the emergence this is the emergence which also was called a board in this instance here we have the airs on the plant you see airs at the root axis we have the lateral root we have the root airs we have the main root and we have the branches of a lateral root okay the branches of a lateral root so we say the plant consists of um, uh, flowers, stem, leaf, and root, right? And now this is what a flower close-up look look like. It has a petal, which is this one that you're seeing here. It has the stigma and the style. The stigma is this, uh, where the 
which receives the pollinated the pollens when it wants to be pollinated the style is a, a structure where the pollen passes through to the ovary okay here is the ovary and we have the ovules the ovules are the eggs inside so we have the pollen this is the po the the pollen which has dropped on the stigma okay from the stamen this stamen comprises of the anther and filament the connecting body is known as filament and the anther is where the pollens are being generated and being dispersed to the um, stigma we have the sepal the sepal are the leaves below the petals we have the receptacle the receptacle is that which holds the flower just as the petiole is that which holds the leaf okay and then we have the stem connecting to the receptacle the flowering stem connecting to the receptacle or the stem from the plant the plant itself because mostly the flowers are formed at the tip of the plant we are at the point where vegetative growth has ceased to occur okay so basically this is a plant body showing the fundamental parts we have looked at the exterior part of the plant which is more like a crop morphological study of the plant but this is a basic crop morphological study so we have looked at what the, a typical angiosperm plant contain uh, it comprises of all right so um from these you should be able to say okay when you see a plant outside you should be able to point out what these things are all right whole plant anatomy now we want to go intricately into whole plant anatomy but we will only do an introductory part of it at this first lecture in subsequent lecture we will start to go deep into the other segments of a plant anatomy all right so first of all we have a plant as you can see here the plant comprises of the apical meristem and the terminal board apical meristem and the terminal board this point is a point of division of cells a point of division of cells both um, mit mitotic divisions and cytot cytotic div divisions mitotic means nuclear divisions cytotic means cytoplasmic divisions these divisions take place to regenerate new cells and these new cells elongate to bring about the growth of a plant okay after the division the next stage is elongation of cells so at this point where this epical meristems and the terminal board are is called the primary growth zone without that point being existing in a plant the plant will cease to grow we have the leaf blade which is the leaf lamina the leaf vein the petiole all of this and the leaf uh, vein comprises of the leaf we have the axillary board the axillary board like i've earlier said okay now we have um, the node also where the leaf is attached and the distance between one node and the other node is called the internode remember don't forget it's called the internode we have the vascular system which runs inside the plant from the root down to the top of the plant the vascular system will go deep inside of that later on but just know that the vascular system comprises of two um two tissues we have the xylem we have the uh phloem okay these two organs make up the vascular system we have the pith also that we get to know more about later we have a lateral root the primary root that one that goes down like this and then the apical meristem also and the primary growth point of this growth zone of the root is also situated here at this point divisions take place which bring about the growth and extension of roots within the soil when root is in searching is searching for water and minerals apical board leaf primordia or the terminal board as well leaf primordia the new leaves that are being formed at the apical board we have the lateral board we have um the stem internode like i told you before the petiole you have to pay attention to this information because they are very critical to understanding the plant anatomy okay over time as you progress in your academic studies um 
I told you that they, sh they from below ground, from above ground, from the top soil or, or, and above is the shoot area. Okay, the shoot organ system uh, is situated there. All right, then the root organ system are below. Now we're looking at the cut sections. This is the cut section of the leaf. The leaf comprises of the cuticle, the epidermis. The epidermis is the more like a dermal tissue. Uh, the palisade mesophyll is inside. We have the xylem and the phloem also in the leaf, we have, which comprise, which make up the vascular tissue. We have the spongy mesophyll, and we have also have the epidermis at the base of the leaf. So the spongy mesophyll is another tissue known as a ground tissue. We'll come into that in details later on. We have the uh, transverse sectional cut of the stem, which shows the epidermis, the dermal tissue, the cortex and the pits which comprises of the ground tissue, the xylem and the phloem which make up the um, vascular tissue, the vascular cambium which is a meristematic area which develops to form the um, growth, enables the growth of the stem or the thickening of the stem which we can also call the secondary growth zone. All right. We have a sectional cut of the uh, root the root comprises of the root air and the epidermis, which make up the dermal tissue. The cortex, endodermis, and pericycle make up the ground tissue. Xylem, phloem make up the vascular tissue. Vascular cambium, which was also found in the stem, makes up the berry stem, which also helps to thicken the root growth. Okay? And which is also known as the secondary growth of the plant. Now, if you look at these three different sectional cords, you will see some unique differences there with respect to the different tissues what comprises of these different tissues for the leaf the cortical and epidermis make up the, tif the dermal tissue but actually the cortical is not really part of the dermal epidermis but because it's, it's on the top surface of the leaf which helps to reduce the loss of water it can serve it can be saying it's aiding the activities of the epidermis okay so we have the palisade mesophyll as the only ground tissue in the leaf the only ground tissue in the leaf while the xylem and the phloem are the uh, vascular tissue in the leaf and this one is consistent with the stem with the uh, root region as well however the ground tissue for the leaf is different from that in the stem the stem ground tissues comprises of the cortex and the pits while that of the root comprises of the cortex, the endodermis, and the pericycle. All right? Okay. So you can note these differences and be careful to note them. For the epidermal tissue, we said that the stem is only the epidermis, the leaf is only the epidermis. However, for the root, the root air form a part of the dermal tissue. Okay? So that's what makes the difference in terms of dermal tissue for the stem, the root. So we are looking at the whole plant anatomy. You can see that we have made a summary of what uh, the plant anatomy looks like. But however, we will go deeper later on and we'll look at cells, we'll look at tissues, we'll look at other components that make up a plant cell. Okay? So, this is what um, this lecture one entails at this point in time and um, there is also this point called the transition zone please take note of this point called the transition zone okay it's important you know it's when the root is trans is, tr is moving from the point of root the plant is moving from the point of root to the point of stem is a transition zone it's very critical you take note of that as well so um, if you have any question Kindly put your questions in the comment section of this video and down there and ensure you click the subscribe button so you receive notifications whenever a new lecture has been updated. All right. It's important you do that as a student of this class It's important you do that. OK, so in summary, um, the, the plant anatomy or crop anatomy looks at the interior part of the plant. Why crop morphology looks at the exterior. We've done a combination of crop morphology and crop anatomy introductory study here at this first, in this first lecture. And you've seen that when you're talking about um, 
anatomy, you have to look at things within the plants. Why, however, when you're talking about morphology, you are looking at the things outside the plant, trying to determine that a leaf, this is a leaf lamina, this is a leaf blade, this is a leaf vein. Those are things you see outside the plant. Okay, auxiliary board, uh, node, petiole, those are things you see outside the plant. But when you start talking about epidermis, cortex, pit, xylem, phloem, vascular cambium, or palisade, mesophyll, or um, uh, endodermis, pericycle, as the case of people with roots, those are internal studies of the plant. So, have in mind, this class is just, this lecture is just the opening of more to come. So, endeavor to go to re go through the video again, have more understanding, and do your own research to add to the knowledge that has been given here. Thank you so much for being a part of this class. See you in next class. Bye-bye for now.